guys, it's me Anna Eves, and today I am doing the your top 10 videos of the year tag. I was tagged to do this video by the awesome JD Estrada, and I have a link to his original video down below for you to peruse. So this video, the idea of it is that all of us creators, we work really hard to make all of these videos. And um, so this is like a reflection. We look back on the the year and we pick 10 of our favorite videos that we think that you know maybe they should be seen a little bit more or at least for me I'm gonna say at least I feel like I did a good job on these videos I have hundreds of videos you guys hundreds I've been doing this YouTube thing for years now and um, I, you don't usually look back so it was kind of interesting to go back this and look at this year's videos of which there are a ton and um, try to pick 10 that I thought stood out from the rest. So, ta-da, I'm going to try to do it. So, the I'm, he ordered his, he's so good. He, <laughs> JD, he put all of his orders, he ranked them. I tried and I failed. So I'm, this is no particular order. These are just the top 10 videos that I liked this year. Okay. So the first one that I thought was really cool was how to make an indoor snowman. And that happened last, like basically now, last year, it snowed here. And it doesn't snow that much where I am. So when it does, it's really exciting. And so it, I gathered snow from outside. I went outside and got snow. I brought it in, I cleaned off my countertop and I just dumped all the snow <laughs> onto it and I made snowmen and I thought that it was really funny and um, it was a lot of fun to do. And then the, the really funny thing is I put my favorite little snowmen into the, my freezer um, with my frosty beer mugs and they stayed around for a while. It took a couple months and they slowly dissolved but the whole experience was hilarious and so that's why how to make an indoor snowman made my list absolute ridiculousness okay the next one is how close did i get to childhood dream jobs and i picked that one because i thought it was pretty funny and also because it was live streamed and i don't do a lot of live streaming uh, maybe i'll start doing a little bit more mainly because <laughs> if, if I do a lot of ums or uhs or whatever, I like to edit those out and maybe live streaming is, is basically so raw and if I say something wrong, it's just done. There's nothing you can do about it. It's there. So the editor in me cries basically. Anyway, so I'm proud of myself. We're doing live streaming and you know, allowing myself to be a bit uncomfortable there. Okay, so next on my list is Ana East Book Club number 14, Licensed to Quill by Jacobo Della Corcha. And I picked that one because his book has been one of the most ins inspirational, I don't know how to say it. He, his, that book w made a huge impact on me. And um, I read a lot of amazing books this year, but his books really, they, they made a big impression. Um, he does alternate history and he's a historian and he has all these footnotes so you can look it up. And I hadn't known a lot about this time period before or anything. So it was really exciting to find out about Shakespeare and Marlowe and all of these things that I didn't know about before. So. It sent me down a research spiral, which I really like, um, and made me really happy. They were a lot of fun, and just learning more things is fun too, and and learning ridiculous things about history. I enjoy that quite a bit, and so I really appreciate the amount of detail and work that went into that book to make it such easy reading. I bet it was so hard to write. It was just incredible. Anyway, so that that really impacted me. And I think that the passion probably shows in that book review because it meant a lot to me. I just, you know, sometimes books come and they touch you and that one did me. 
Okay, so the next is the waitlist one, book reading and discussion. So that one is about my book that I published last, this time last year, basically. I, I think it was in January. Um, so in January, the waitlist one came out, I believe. And the waitlist one is a young adult first novel. And it deals with a girl from the time that she is admitted to an eating disorder clinic till the time that she is let out of this inpatient facility. So for me, it was a big deal because I experienced that myself and I don't tend to talk about it a lot. Um, and so for me to write a book about it, I mean, it's fiction, my book is fiction, but I based it on myself, on my experiences. That, um, I was pretty bold for me um, and to just, so that's why I picked it because I did that and I'm glad I did. Okay, so the next one is an author interview with Asif Mare and he also writes alternate fiction uh, uh, history and his is uh, like a fantasy uh, version of Rome and there is a paranormal detective and so it that again is one of my favorite sort of things. I love his book and I really enjoyed getting to interview him and have him talk about his book because he is a funny and smart guy and so it's good to get a little bit more insight about the book from the author himself. So very cool that I get to interview people on my channel. Um, I, I think it's really great. I've done Joshua Robertson had it. I got to talk to him in an interview. Lillian Oak, J.D. Estrada, um, and also Mara. And it's really, I, I love books and I love hearing from the authors about their book creations. So the next one is my top five romance authors. And I really like that. I found out since then, Carla Neggers is on the list. And when I first made that video, I said that she wrote, you know, the sweet contemporary books. I found out that she also writes romantic suspense, which is one of my favorite things. And of course, I already knew I loved her writing. So I loved having it in a romantic suspense. I've read those books since. So anyway, I, I was really excited to share that. Um, I love, I love romance. So yeah, it just kind of makes sense. So I like that video. The next one is the dissociate lyric video. And that is a song that I wrote this year. I recorded it live. So, um, I just sat down, I played it, I sang it, bam, there it is. And so I guess that I picked it because music is another thing that I do besides writing that is a big deal for me. So, I, and I like that song, so there it is. Next up, for something completely different. I mean, the music is pretty different too from this other stuff, but um, Cat Goes Fishing, Caverns and Coral, beta number one, Chompy. So, Cat Goes Fishing, I played a whole series of, it's a game, and I did a series um, about it, and then this one is a beta for the, the new update that they had, which was Caverns and Coral, which I thought was awesome, because I love fish, I love Caverns and Coral, can't go wrong. Um, and I just thought it was a lot of fun, it was just really light and cheeky and fun and you need that every once in a while I, you know games are relaxing that way the next up is the hurricane maria tag and that one was tough because i knew people who were suffering and it's always hard when you hear about a big disaster and you know it, it's always really shocking you know whenever something happens but when you know somebody who is experiencing it firsthand it adds another layer to it. And so it was really emotional to do and I, it was to raise awareness for the what's happening in Puerto Rico, what's still happening. It's been, you know, quite a while since the hurricane and there's still people who don't have water and are suffering greatly. And so they still need our help. And so it's, it's very important to me to keep talking about Puerto Rico 
and try to help them as much as I can with my limited means. So, and then the final thing, the final video is the Booktubeathon 2017 update. And that was fun because I did Booktubeathon, which was you're supposed to read a bunch of books in a short period of time. I didn't quite make it, but I did read a lot of books and that was fun. And also around that time, Bright Needles, my first book, um, got to be number one on the charts. And that was so, so thrilling for me, um, especially since it was number one on the Canadian poetry charts. And so it was like me and then there's Leonard Cohen, who is a literary hero of mine. I love Leonard Cohen, I love his work, and to see our books in the same chart made me very happy and it was a big deal for me, you know? It was like another milestone met. So anyway, that is my top 10 videos. I know JD tagged a ton of people, so uh, let's just, we can bounce off of him. I don't really know who to tag um, that he hasn't already <laughs> tagged because he is quite thorough. Uh, so, yeah, I guess we're gonna call it good. I'm gonna finish my tea. I hope that you have tea too, and I will talk to you next time. Thank you. Bye.